The Minneapolis police officer who knelt on George Ford's neck had 18 previous complaints against him, according to the police department. Yeah. Only two of the complaints against Chavine were closed with discipline, according to a MPD Internal Affairs public summary. In both cases, the discipline issued column indicated that a letter of reprimand had been issued in response. Chavine was not the only officer on the scene that day with a history of complaints against him. Former officer Ching Chong, y'all remember him, the one that was standing guard. He had six complaints filed with internal affairs, one of which was still open, according to the public summary released Thursday. The other five complaints had been closed without discipline. The two other officers involved had no complaints filed against them, according to MPD Internal Affairs. One officer was the subject of a lawsuit, Ching Chong. Once again, the guard was also part of a 2017 excessive force lawsuit that was settled by the city of Minneapolis, according to a settlement obtained by CNN and an attorney for the plaintiff in the case. The lawsuit was brought by Lamar Ferguson, who claimed in the lawsuit that Ching Chong and another officer subjected him to cruel and unusual punishment when they arrested him in October of 2014. According to the lawsuit, the officers used unreasonable force, including punches, kicks, and knees to the face and body while Ferguson was defenseless and handcuffed. Sound familiar? As a result, Ferguson suffered broken teeth, bruising, and trauma, the lawsuit stated. The city would go on to pay Ferguson and his attorney $25,000 to settle the lawsuit on December 11, 2017. Both the city and the officers denied liability in the settlement, according to a 2017 settlement from the city of Minneapolis. Once again, they denied everything in trying to cover up. A physical altercation broke out. According to the lawsuit, Ching Chong threw Ferguson to the ground and began hitting him. Ching Chong allegedly lifted Ferguson's head up by grabbing the back of Ferguson's hoodie as the other officer allegedly kicked him in the mouth. Yeah. These police officers are some thugs. Ferguson was taken to the hospital, but allegedly the officers expressed impatience with the medical staff caring for Ferguson. When he was discharged, the officers allegedly threw his discharge papers, including prescription painkillers, in the garbage as they left the hospital, the lawsuit stated. Shout. This stuff. Oh my God. This is sad. This is so heartbreaking. I can't believe this. <sighs> Officer.
officers are supposed to protect and serve. You know, and the thing with George Floyd, it was for them. They're claiming that he resisted arrest, but they got him in handcuffs. And once they got him in handcuffs, They pinned him down for almost 10 minutes, and that led to his death. My thing is, once they handcuffed him, why did they not put him in a car and take him to the jail to be processed? None of this stuff makes sense to me. Those police officers murdered that man. There's no denying that. Those police officers arrived on the scene with malicious intent. There's no denying that. The way that they handled the situation speaks for itself. And I'm going to tell y'all what I don't like. I don't like that Negro that was in the background when the incident was being recorded saying, man, get up. That's what you call a cool Negro. That man was pleading for his life. He was saying, I can't get up. Please let me up. I can't breathe. And here you have a real coon talking about I've been standing here watching the whole time. I don't like that. And I'm going to tell you what else I don't like. I don't like the black people that's making excuses for this entire situation. Talking about stop rioting. Why? That's the only kind of language that gets their attention. People are sick and tired of being sick and tired. And it's not like they burning down black businesses because I haven't seen not one black business that has been burned down. Everything that I seen that was being burnt down was owned by the government and the corporate white folks. I'm gonna tell you something else that I saw that was disturbing. In Atlanta, when they went to the CNN station and vandalized the building, The white reporter was standing up there recording the incident as it took place. You got the state troopers, National Guard, local police, whatever they were. They were standing inside of the building watching these people right in front of their face, standing right at the door. One black person one young black man was grabbed and taken into custody. Then you have a white man in the same spot where they grabbed the little young black man standing there with a skateboard throwing finger signs at them and breaking the windows. But they didn't grab him. Mm -mm. That was too much like right. See, racism and white privilege was still standing right there in their face. Nobody seemed to notice that. This stuff is ridiculous. And I don't think that Derek Chavine should have been granted a bond. 
It's too soon. It's way too soon. They should have at least waited until the riots and the protests calmed down. Then we have President Donald J. Trump rethinking his statements just because they don't ran down on the White House and people calling him out. Every time he opened his mouth, ignorance come out. This is a mess. At the end of the day, I'm praying for George Floyd's family. They have my deepest condolences. And I don't know. I just don't know. This is terrible. The police department says the Minnesota police officer who knelt on George Floyd's neck had 18 previous complaints against him. But before we get into all that, how many victims of police brutality and or racism can you name off the top of your head? Trayvon Martin, Tamir Rice, Brandon Weber, Philando Castillo, Mike Brown, Breonna Taylor, Sandra Bland, Eric Gardner, Ahmaud Aubrey, uh, Botham Jean, George Floyd. And that's just off the top of my head. So my point is, the people that are complaining about the riots are cowards. Fuck them damn buildings and vehicles that are being burned down to the ground, okay? That material shit can be replaced, but you cannot replace life, idiots. Some of the people I've been seeing all over the internet can care less about what's really going on. They jumping in the mix to grab content for their YouTube channel and or take pictures and videos for their Instagram and Facebook and Twitter page. They don't give a damn about what's really going on. The ones that actually matter are the ones on the front line. Those are the real soldiers. You see, they don't have time to take pictures and videos for the internet because they too busy fighting for justice because they really fighting for justice. And that lying ass white man with that bow and arrow, he needed his ass whooped, okay? The one with the bow and arrow and the machete. Okay? And there's a lot of more mixed in the crowd that need their ass whooped too. Because they fake as hell. Y'all ain't going to be able to spot them. Because they're going to look like and sound like they belong, but they really don't. If you pay close attention, they're going to fuck up and say something. They're going to say something wrong, and you will be able to identify them. Okay? Let me tell y'all something. We are not our ancestors. Okay? We are in the trenches. So, if you're not for us, then you're against us. It's just simple as that. If you don't like aggressive protests, stay your ass at home. Don't jump off the porch if you ain't ready, okay? Stay on the sidewalk. Because the streets ain't made for everybody. Let me tell you something. For that man, think about it, y'all. For that man's wife 
to file for a divorce the same day he got arrested? She'd been waiting on a perfect opportunity to leave. She been knew he was fucked up. Nine times out of ten, she was just too afraid to leave, or she was waiting on the perfect opportunity. She saw opportunity with this, and she took it. She got on down. And let me let y'all know something else for the people that are screaming, it ain't going to never end. We know that. And just so you will know, the riots ain't going to never end either. And for the people that are trying to spin it, stay on topic, okay? Because police brutality has nothing to do with black on black crime, okay? Nothing. And nor is it. Does it have anything to do with white on white crime? Stay focused, okay? This whole thing is about police brutality, not black on black crime. We'll get to that another time, okay? I'll be doing too much. Shaveen is being kept at Oak Park Heights State Prison, the highest custody level in the Minnesota correctional system. He's scared, y'all. The move to DOC custody was made out of an abundance of caution to ensure he is safely held and after concern about space in the jail due to the large numbers of arrests related to the unrest over the last few nights the state department of correctional had said there he has access to phones and video visitations in-person visits are not allowed because rona still circulating okay one of his complaints, that's what we're talking about here. We're going to go through some of his complaints. One of his complaints is from Christopher Burge, a 24-year-old white man from Minneapolis. He was one of the people who filed a complaint against Shaveen and another officer, accusing them of pulling a gun on them in 2013 after one of the teens shot a nerf gun that may have struck a passerby hmm. he did what wait a minute christopher berg a 24 year old white man from minneapolis was one of the people who filed a complaint against Shaveen and another officer, accusing them of pulling a gun on him and his teenage friends in 2013 after one of the teens shot a Nerf gun that may have struck a passerby. I ain't had no being to doing that. In an email to BuzzFeed News on Thursday, Burr said that had he and his friends not been white, they would have likely been shot by the officers. They would have seen me as a bigger threat. They would have have said they feared for their lives and that they thought I was armed, Bruce said. I think Derek Chavine intentionally escalated incidents 
because he enjoyed having that power over people. Yeah, I think. Burr said three of his teammates had been dropping him off at home in a car when one of his friends shot a Nerf dart <laughs> outside the car window that may have struck a passerby. Minutes after <laughs> the car pulled up to Burr's house and he got out of the car, Shaveen and his partner pulled up in a police car behind them without any sirens or lights and with their guns drawn <laughs> it ain't funny but it is kind of fun okay <laughs> because this is a little white boy saying this okay Hanson said his mother told him immediately this is the other boy's parent these are clips somebody has sent me after the incident, how much worse it could have been <laughs> that had one of their black friends been in a car with them. If I were black, I would probably be dead, Burris wrote in a Facebook post on Wednesday. Oh, girl, they eat this up. <laughs> Our white privilege saved our lives. Y'all heard that little white boy. He said, when Shaveen, Derek Shaveen, you know, had pulled down on him and his friends for shooting a Nerf dart gun out the window that may have hit a passerby, He's saying, if I were black, I would probably be dead. Our white privilege saved our lives. And I'm going to tell y'all something. Y'all think these people don't know that they have white privilege? Oh, they know. So I really wish people would stop saying that they are afraid when they're dealing with black people. No, they're not. They're not afraid. They're trained. And they know better. They take advantage of their authority. That's all it is. In 2006, Shaveen was among a group of six officers who opened fire on a stabbing suspect after a chase that ended when the suspect pointed a sawed-off shotgun at them. The suspect, Wayne Rise, was hit multiple times and died. A grand jury decided the use of force was justified. Mm. Y'all heard that. They shot Wayne a whole lot of times. And the grand jury said it was justified. This was in 2006. But let me go on. When I get done with this video, I'm over Derek Chavin. Two years later, Chavin shot Ira Latrell toes as he was responding to a domestic dispute. He need to call this motherfucker here. He been a thug. This fool is a menace to society in real life. He just shooting people. Like, pow, pow. Pow, pow. He just all over the place shooting people. And, um... Uh, right now, okay, I can't even say that because I almost was going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say he wasn't racist, you know, when he hemmed up the little white boy and pulled the gun on them. But the little white boy said, you know, white privilege saved him. 
Okay. According to a Pioneer Press account of the incident, a 911 operator received a call from an apartment and heard a woman yelling for someone to stop hitting her. Shaveen and another officer arrived just as Toes locked himself in the bathroom. So this fool out here beating up a woman and then gonna run in the bathroom. Now he needed his ass work. I don't I ain't gonna say he needed, you know, to be shot. I don't know about all that. But he needed his ass work if he run around here popping on women. Toes went from Shaveen, Toes went for Shaveen's gun, and Shaveen shot him twice in the stomach. Ooh, the abdomen. Sound like it hurt. <laughs> Toe survived and was charged with two counts of felony obstruction. <laughs> so he got charged and shot. He had a bad day that day. Y'all, I swear to God, this is going to be my last video. And for my little cousin, because I know you be watching my videos, you the one that sent me these clips. Y'all don't send me no more of this mess. Toes told the Daily Beast that the mother of his child called the police that night and he fled into the bathroom after officers broke down the apartment door. Boom! Boom! They came in like the hawk. <laughs> Can you imagine? I'm trying to imagine this stuff while I'm reading because this stuff is crazy. This man is a menace. Javine then broke down the bathroom door and started to hit him <laughs> without warning. Bow, 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 right upside his head. <laughs> he said he fought back in self-defense and was too disoriented <laughs> to go for his javel. <laughs> he must was really in him. He was in him with all kind of thunder cookies so he can fight and shoot. Girl, Shaveen is a menace. That man said he was too disoriented to go for Shaveen's gun. Toe said he ultimately pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor charge and still feels pain from the shooting. Yeah, think. He tried to kill me in that bathroom, Toe said. <laughs> Online City Records also show. <laughs> that 17 complaints have been filed against Shaveen. 16 complaints were closed with no discipline. The remaining complaint generated two letters of reprimand with one apparently related to the use of a squad car dashboard camera. Wonder what that was about. I don't even want to look it up. I swear to God I don't, because I mean, it is what it is. The records don't indicate any detail on the substance of the complaints. Jabba. Yeah, 